everybody. Happy Sunday. Happy Mother's Day. Danielle Hello, everyone. Happy Mother's Day. Danielle and I are here to show you this quick little box. Mine is actually going to have some K cups coming out of the top of it. And Danielle will show you another version if you don't have K cups or if you don't have dyes or just plain don't want to do it that way. Yay! So, yay! So, um, let's get started, shall we? It's super quick, it's super easy, and it doesn't require a ton of stuff. So, we are going to start with an 8 by 10 piece of cardstock. Um, we are going to have a um, panel on the front that is one and three quarters by three and three quarters. If you are using the pinwheel um, die, you are going to want another piece of paper that is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. You are going to want the silver brads to go with, or whatever you have in your stash. And also, I have found that the next to largest, second largest, whatever, um, die works the best for this. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to use a scoreboard. Okay, I'm going to use a Martha Stewart scoreboard. Danielle's going to use a score pal scoreboard. Wait, is that a score pal scoreboard? Memory keepers. Ah, it's a memory, memory keeper. Gotcha. All right. So we are going to put our paper in portrait, portrait wise. So the shortest side is along the top. We're going to score it two inches and six inches. And we are going to then rotate. So our Paper is 10 inch side along the top, and we are going to score it three and a half, five and a half, seven and a half, and nine and a half. And we're done with our scoring at that point. Before we put our scoreboard away, though, I learned this one the hard way. Grab a pencil, and at the one and a half inch mark, just make a little mark on both sides. One and a half. So I have tiny little tick marks at one and a half. So you can use your scoring tool, you can use a pencil, whatever you want. Do you want to do both ends? Um, we want to do both sides of that large rectangle. So not necessarily both ends, but we have created that three and a half inch rectangle. And so we want to do both the left and right portrait wise on that. Yeah. All right, so. Next, we're going to fold and burnish or edges. Okay, fast tip. When you fold your paper down and you line it up with the edges, start in the center and work your way out and that helps keep your line straight. If you start on the edge, you're more than likely to, your paper's more than likely to follow your folder, or your bone folder, I mean, and you're more than likely to get the most uneven burnishing when you're doing this. That's a tip I'm sure I learned long ago because it's what I do. <laughs> I would not have thought to said so. Thank you. All right, so we are then going to remove this tiny little corner. So I have my three and a half by four inch square at the top of my screen. So we have the half inch at the bottom. So we are going to remove the two bottom 
uh, squares. And then we are also going to um, create a cut line at our marks that we created at two inches. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. So. So we probably should have scored at that point, but none of the instructions actually say so. And then we are going to remove the top. So after you have done that, now we're going to cut all of our individual score lines on our two sides up to that two inch that score line that we did. So we are creating little two by two flaps. So now we have all of our little two by two flaps. So if you are doing your die cutting of your circles in the top, you want to do that now. If you're not doing circle die cutting for K-pots to fit in, follow me. Do nothing. <laughs> Sit and watch. All right, so if you have a um a kettle bug or a big shot your whole piece is not going to fit through so we are going to fold half of our flaps in and then it fits absolutely perfectly we are going to take our die and we are going to line it up close to our score mark on our left side and kind of situated evenly top and bottom of those score lines and I'm using washi tape so my stuff does not move so my score line is here and here and here now here's something that I learned the hard way when you put your plate down you kind of need to pay attention because we have two layers on the side and only one layer on this side so you want to line your plate up with one of your score marks that way you do not get weird score marks on or weird embossing marks on your project. All right, so we've cut out that first one. And you can kind of see maybe that little rounded circle indent right there by my finger, and you can't see it very well. Um, that is from the embossing or the cut plate. So we're just trying to minimize that to the best of our ability. I'm going to pop out that circle, and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Using the washi tape. And you do want to line it up to the outside so that you have enough space for the lip on your k cup so they overlap as minimally as possible. Right, get that lined up. 
run that through. And while I have my um, machine out, I am going to die cut my pinwheel really quick. So now you are to use some score tape or some red line tape. And we are going to add it next to the score line on our little half inch flap. And you want it as close to that line as possible. Give that a little burnish. All right, so here's where the trick, little trick comes into play. So we're going to take the backing off of our tape, whatever tape it happens to be, and we're going to fold the panel with our holes in it over just one time. All right, and I know that it's a little bit difficult to see, but you can see a little bit because of the light in the dark. Okay. And then we are going to fold at the bottom of our three and a half inch circle, or not circle, but our three and a half inch large rectangle. We're going to fold that straight down, just like this. We're going to give it a good press. And then we are going to open. And we know that our box is now a square box. There's no question as to whether or not you got it lined up correctly. And so, and else, I'm trying to do it the hard way. Well, I was uh, getting my pieces prepped for um, my cover. Yes. All right. So put your um, super sticky tape. I just, I'm notching my guys so that there's not so much bulk in there. Which I didn't really want to do anything while you were doing something so that it's, <laughs> people don't get, <laughs> wait, do I, who do I watch? So it's a lot easier for me to play catch up than confuse everyone. Did you cut these off? No. You want okay. those ones because otherwise you don't have a way for the back to seal. Gotcha. So on my example, you can't really tell, but you can kind of tell. My back ones don't have a flap on them. So. Okay, I'm almost done. I'm just like putting a little notch in these just to help with the bulk. I don't have score uh, tape like Michelle does, so I'll be using just a traditional tape runner. All right. And a notch here. And a notch there. Okay, 
so if you lay it out flat, hold up your little half inch. We're not doing that yet. <laughs> okay, so put your glue on your little half inch. Yep, put glue there. Um, I want to put this down first. I want to put my marker down first because it's going to be too hard to try to put that on once it's all built. This okay. decorative piece, because you're not doing a decorative piece, are you? But you are not doing necessarily. Aren't you? But I, yeah, because we're still folding it flat at this point, so you can still easily add that on there. So we're ignoring the flaps on our sides first. Go ahead, you can you can keep going. Well, I was gonna reiterate how I did it so it folded up flat, easy, no problems. So if you put, if you, so you don't have to do the glue part at this point, but if you lay it out flat completely, mine's already glued so I can't open it. So lay your yeah. flat. So if you open it flat with your just half inch folded in. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. My apologies, don't fold in the, the half inch. Leave the half inch. Okay. And then fold that first flap up. Nope, the other way. This part here. Our words aren't okay. Today. <laughs> That's okay. It's I. It's because I think I have something else in my head on how I want it to go. Since I'm doing it different than you are. Gotcha. Um, because I want this to be my last piece that comes in and folds in. That way you can open it. And so I want these to be my outside pieces. So this is what's going to flap it and then these are going to come in and close and open because I'm not going to um, leave it open on the sides for you to slide anything in since this has the little lip. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Okay. It does make sense. And you might want to um, chop those last two in half. Yep. Yep. That's what I was, I was just getting ready to <laughs> maneuver that. That's why I was, I was waiting to see where you were going and then I was like, gotcha. hmm, um, Okay. All right, so I am going to stamp actually on my white piece here, and I am going to use the Craft with Heart stamp set, the newest one, and I'm going to use Time to Celebrate You. Okay. And I'm going to stamp this in archival black. Go ahead. Yep. So I'm going to stamp, um, thank you. And I'm going to stamp my little piece that's going to go on the upper flap right up here. And I'm going to use black also, but not archival, just traditional. This will make a cute thank you. Um, even if it is for Mother's Day, like if, you know, like I get, I'm a little lucky because my stepmom is in Florida and so she, they're not coming home right away. So I don't have to, um, I can make hers now and she'll never know the difference unless she watches this video. That is a benefit. Yeah. So mine's going to go down here and then I'm going to adhere that at the end end of my piece. Before I do that, I'm going to add some doodles. And what are you doing with yours? Are you putting your pinwheel together? I am now putting my pinwheel together. So I have learned that if you use your piercing tool, you can help train your paper as to what you want it to do. Because the die pokes the holes for you, so you don't even have to do that. It's so easy. All 
And then I just give it, I wouldn't even call it a pinch, but I just give it a little squeeze to say, hey, this is where I want you to be. Oh, yep. and now we're gonna try and do something difficult, which is take a brad out of the package with only one hand. <laughs> oh, no. That's what I've had it for. We can do it. Eureka. Eureka, I did it. Me too. <laughs> ah, successful. And then I'm going to attach mine with a glue dot. Perfect. Not quite there yet. I... This is also, my project is not only going to double for today's tutorial for Mother's Day or any gift that you want, a coffee drinker in your life. And I'm also going to double it up for my um, Tickled Pink Heart to Heart Challenge for the design team. Hence is why I'm using the uh, pinkish color in the mix-in box. And then mine is going to go right up here, my pinwheel. So I'm going to put adhesive on these inner two flaps. And I'm going to fold this up. so they fit in nicely. And I might need to cut them down a little bit more lengthwise too. Nope, perfect. Just don't shove it in all the way. <laughs> creative. Oh shoot. I wanted to put these on too before I got it all sealed up because I don't like putting stuff in on after the fact, after it's already built. <laughs> so. I have done that a number of times. All right. So if anybody is doing it like I am, these are two by four. If you wanted to cut them down to uh, one and 1.75 by 3.75 for a small border, you could. I think you'd be okay. It's just a really snug fit that it's exactly the inside measurements of those score lines. It looks like I'm going to actually have some overhang. No problem. Handy dandy scissors, we'll cut that off. How's yours turning out? Mine is adorable. Yours is super cute as well. Thank you. 
just trimming off a little bit of hang. So this might want to be cut down, maybe an eighth smaller for the top lid. I know it's off camera right now, but I'm gonna get it there. Now I can put my K pods right inside and I didn't have to worry about um, having the right size circles, which I don't. And you could put that on the front front. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe. I don't know that I like it now that I did it. I'm not a big fan of the pinwheel and the colors that I chose. If that makes sense. I was yeah. just trying to use up spray. So I don't think I'm going to go with that particular one. I think I have um, some cricket flowers that you made me cut out one time. <laughs> <laughs> she came all the way to Ohio and twisted my arm that I'm going to put right here. It's small flowers that I didn't use on a, the unicorn project. Oh, um, yeah, and so I think I'm going to put the small flower right there and I think that will be adorable. Gotcha. And my, it's a good thing my stepmom's a coffee drinker. Okay. And I, I think I'm going to tuck a little gift certificate to the coffee shop that she likes to go to in her town um, and here in Ohio underneath the k pods so that she also can treat herself and me. No. <laughs> I like that. Mine are tea pods as opposed to coffee pods. But the other option, if you don't have the, the, oh my gosh, what the heck is this thing called now? Tea wheel? Wow. <laughs> Um, if you don't have that, you could easily use that coffee set that, while I know it's retired, it is still available. And I just have it. And I put it away. There it is. So the um, perk up set, I have a couple of cups here, so I wanted to show you. So you could, oh, that would be totally cute. You could add a cup to the front and it does, it does stick up, but that would be super fun to add on there. You could add I love that stamp it's a little bit, it's a little bit big for the top one, but I, I really like it there on the front. So that's an option yeah. too. Um, but yeah, this stamp and thin cut set, one of my favorites so yeah and you could you know for those that are a minimalist or you know they just get the basic supplies that they need and, and they don't have a i don't know who that is but you could also grab some ribbon and put some ribbon around it oh yeah not necessarily the kingdom but um white ribbon would be really pretty um you know any coordinating or complementing color to this or shimmer trim I don't know about you guys, but I have, I hoard my shimmer trim, even though we don't have it anymore. <laughs> Those colors, I should say. Um, you know, but that's a, another way to dress it up if you don't have the pinwheel. True. Just to like, add those. Yeah. I used the sangria ribbon on my sample here, as well as sangria cardstock for the pinwheel. Oh, did you? And um, mm -hmm. the pinwheel, I didn't get up quite high enough. But you can see the, it's a, a nice dark contrast. So you don't have to have a ton of stuff. You could just have your cardstock and add a ribbon around it or two ribbons around it. And it would be super cute. Yeah, for sure. Like, I think I'm gonna try and make my pin will work for this. And so to bring off some contrast, I'm gonna come in with a dabber and just kinda see if I can get that to work because it just needs a barrier since the color's the same. So yeah. there's lots of things like play with your supplies, play with what you have. Um, you know, you just saw me try to make something work and it's not. So now I'm trying to make it work again. <laughs> but just, you know, like keep trying those different, different things, those different techniques um, and see what works. 
Who the knows? other thing too, you could um, put a circle behind it. Mm -hmm. And that would give it a little bit of uh, something to stand behind it to say, hey. Yeah. This yeah. All kinds of different, you know, I mean, these, this group is like one of the most creative groups I've um, seen in a really long time. So I'm sure there's going to be someone that's going to come out with something that's like, oh, why didn't we think of that, you know? Yes. We have had a ton of that happen. I know. Where you're just like blown away at the, the creativity. It's still not my favorite, but it's definitely something that could work. Definitely doable. I'm excited to finish this off and kind of play with it. And I will post my finished project in the album. Yes, both of ours will be in the album. So, um, although you might have to wait till daylight till you get a little bit better photo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, all right. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. We really do appreciate it. We hope you like our little project today and that you create for yourself. Um, we can't wait to see what you come up with and, and how you solve our problems. And uh, it'll be fun. We hope you enjoy your Mother's Day and have a chance to relax and that your kids pamper you, whether they be two-legged or four-legged. Yes. Or, yeah. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Happy Mother's Day. We will see you guys later. Bye-bye.